प्रथम सद्गुर वंदे श्रीकृष्ण तदन गुरु पात्मना श्रीकृष्णस्वमलात्मना कस्तूरीतिलक ललाटपटले वक्षस्थले कौस्तुभ नाग्रे वर्मौक्तिकतले करे कंकण सर्वांगे हरिचंदन सुलित कंठे च वली गोपस्त्री परिवेष्टि विजयते दधाति पूर्व यो वै वेदाश्च प्रणोति तस्म तग्वह दिवत्मबुद्धि प्रकाशम मुमुक्षुर्व शरणमह प्रपद्ये Dear devotees, I'm going to talk to you for the next couple of days about incorporating the path to God into our life. Specifically tonight, I want to start with the question that many people have in their mind: Is it even possible for a householder to follow the path to God? This is the family camp. here at radha madhav dham so many family people are here and many many people wonder is bhakti for family people is there any possibility of really following the path to god while living in the family <coughs> of course if that question has come in the mind it means the person has heard a few basic things like god is the ultimate aim of our life only by attaining god can a person attain perfect happiness and bhakti is the path to attain god once a person has heard that okay i want perfect happiness perfect happiness is only in god god can be attained by doing bhakti then the question comes can i do bhakti 
Does bhakti suit my lifestyle? Is it possible for me in this life to attain perfect happiness by attaining God? We're going to look at this question from three different perspectives. One, what do the scriptures say? Two, we'll look at it historically. And three, we'll think about it logically. Let's start with our scriptures. The crown jewel of all the Vedic scriptures is the Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam tells the essence of Vedas, essence of Upanishads, essence of the Darshan Shastras, in other words, the Vedant, the Brahma Sutra, which itself is the essence of the Darshan Shastras. Arthoyam Brahma Sutra Nam. The meaning and essence of Brahma Sutra is also in Bhagavatam. And Bhagavatam clarifies all the points related to the path to God and specifically the path of devotion. So let's see, what does the Bhagavatam tell us about a family person following the path to God? You know, we think of ourselves, we, we, in this case, everybody is pretty, I would say, realistic about their state in this world or their situation. You know, when people talk to me, they say, I'm like this, I'm like that, I'm so tied down in the world, I have so many responsibilities, I'm so busy, I have so many worldly desires. How can I follow the path? So, as, as bad as we may think we are, or as you know, difficult a situation we may think we're in, in the Bhagavatam, in the very beginning, Shaunakadik Paramahans asked Sudji Maharaj a question about the souls of Kalyug. And what they describe is even worse than how we think of ourselves. And yet they're asking, what should these souls do? They say, Maharaj, in Kalyug, first of all, people have a very short lifespan. They don't live for long. Add to that, Sumanda Matayo. Mandamati means to be a little bit slow up here. Sumandamati means Parakashtha. <laughs> so he's saying the souls of Kalyug, not only are they short lived, but their mind is very slow. Not only that, they're not very motivated. Souls in Kalyug are lazy. So for short-lived, dull-witted, lazy, <laughs> he's not done yet. He says, add to that that their body never stays healthy. Their body is always bothering them. Disease always chases them, their body's always uncomfortable, they can't sit for long, their mind is disturbed by all different kinds of things, anger and, and other people. And so these types of souls who are like this in Kalyug, tell us what should they do to attain God, to attain Shreya. Shreya means the ultimate thing. Absolute happiness, God. What's a, what should such souls do? Not only that, they said, but the scriptures which hold the answer to all these questions and, and which tell the path to God, these scriptures are very extensive and they, they tell so many different paths. And no one can study it all in one lifetime, let alone understand it all. So, Maharaj, you please distill all of this knowledge down for us and just tell us the simple, direct path to God that even these souls of Kalyug can follow. 
Suji Maharaj first praised them for asking such a beneficial question that the whole world would get benefited from. And then he answered it simply and straight with a straightforward shlok. Savai punsam paro dharmo yato bhakti radhokchaje ahai tukya pratihata yayatma samprasidati the Atma can attain its ultimate happiness only by following the path of bhakti. And that path of bhakti should be followed selflessly and uninterruptedly throughout the whole life. Such a path of bhakti is the supreme duty of every soul. Savai punsam paro dharmaha. Paraha dharma. Par means param, supreme. The supreme dharma for all the souls is bhakti. So you see, no matter how bad of a picture <coughs> Shaunakadik Paramahans could paint, saying these souls of Kalyuga are like this, they're like this, they're like this. Nonetheless, Suchi Maharaj says, no problem, they can do bhakti and they'll attain God. Later on in the Bhagavatam, Parikshit, King Parikshit, who has only one week to live, asks Shukadevji, Guruji, please tell me that what should I do with the rest of time that I have here on earth and also tell me what should the ordinary souls do? Shukadevji told him, Nahyato nya shiva pantha vishata sansrita viha bhakti yogo vasudeve bhagavati bhakti yogo yato bhavet. He says, Parikshit, O king. Vishata sansrita viha means like you're caught in the whirlwind of this sansar. Many of you express this type of thing to me. Like life is just moving so fast and I have so many responsibilities and there are so many distractions. I'm just caught up in this cycle of day after day after day and life is going by and how do I bring devotion into this. So, Shukadevji says, for such souls, nanyaha. There is no other path, Shiva pantha. Shiva, in this case, means auspicious, welcoming, easy to follow. There is no other path but bhakti yoga the path of devotion. Vasudeve bhagavati bhakti yogo yato bhavet. Whatever a soul can do to develop bhakti in his heart, that is the easiest path for these souls who are so caught up in the world. He goes on to tell more about the greatness of bhakti. He says, Bhagavan brahma kartsnena triran vikshya manishaya he says, O king, did you know that one time the great Brahma studied the Vedas? And who knows the Vedas better than Brahma? He's the one through whose varni Ved was produced in this world and with Sri Krishna's grace he was able to understand the Vedas. He went through the Vedas studying them in detail three times, not once. Imagine a hundred thousand shlokas. He went through it one time, the next time, third time with his divine intellect and he decided that the essence of everything 
is whatever develops bhakti in your heart for Shri Krishna. That's it. Rati Ratman Yato Bhavet. Rati Bhakti, devotion. Atman, the soul of your soul. Whatever develops love for the soul of your soul, Shri Krishna, that is the best path. That is the path for all the souls. Therefore, Parikshit, Tasmat, Sarvatmana Rajan, Hari, Sarvatra Sarvada, Shrotavya, Kirti Tavyascha, Smartavyo, Bhagavan Rinam. O King, you should practice bhakti all the time. Shravana bhakti, Kirtana bhakti, and Smarana bhakti. This is what we practice here at Radha Madhav Dham, and this is what Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj tells us to practice every day. What we have to learn now is how do we actually incorporate that into our life? How do we do Shravan, listening, listening style of bhakti, Shravan bhakti? How do we do Kirtan bhakti, singing God's praises? And Smarana Bhakti, remembering God all the time. These are the three main forms of Bhakti, which Shukdevji has given importance to in the Bhagavatam and which Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj has emphasized in his books and speeches. So how do we incorporate this into our life? This is what we're going to talk about this week. Later in the Bhagavatam, for one final reference, Uddhav Paramahans asks Shri Krishna directly, Vadanti Krishna Shreyansi Bahuni Brahma Vadina Tesham Vikalpa Pradhanyo Mutaho Ekamukhyata O Shri Krishna, I see that our scriptures are full of so many descriptions of so many different paths and the knowers of God have described so many different paths. To attain Shreya, the ultimate goal of a soul's life. So you please tell me out of all of those paths, Eka Mukhyata, which one is Mukhya? Which one is primary? Which one is supreme above all the others? Shri Krishna said, Bhaktya hame kaya grahya shraddhayatma priya satam bhakti punati mannishtha svapakan api sambhavat Shri Krishna says, and again, this comes back, this is supposed to comfort us. He says, Uddho, I am only attainable through bhakti, through faithful devotion. And you know how great this path of bhakti is, how accessible it is to common people? He says, you know there are people who are born in such families who survive by eating dogs. Such a fallen soul. He says, that person can be purified through my bhakti. So if such a fallen soul can be purified, such a horrible situation a person is born into, imagine what pop they must have done <laughs> to earn such a birth. And yet Shri Krishna says, no problem. They can also do my bhakti. So then, we should also be able to do his bhakti. We see now that the scriptures, specifically the Srimad Bhagavat Puran, has told us very clearly that bhakti can be practiced by any kind of fallen soul, <clears throat> no matter how distracted or attached or fallen. Now let's move on to the second way of looking at this, which is the historical perspective. If you look at the history 
of devotees. Sure, you find devotees like Jagat Guru Shankaracharya, who by age eight knew all the Vedas, and by age 12 had written his Bhashya, <laughs> Dwait Bhashya, and by age 16 had conquered all the scholars of India. His Digvijay was finished by age 16 and he was known as Jagat Guru. Sure, there are saints like that as well, but there are also saints who, to whom we can relate a little more to, whose lifestyle matches a little more with ours. Look at the farmer, Dhannaja. He was a very simple man. He had no learning, zero education. As we say, Angutha Chap. If he had to sign his name, he would just wet his thumb in the ink and put his thumbprint because he didn't even know how to write his own name. Such a simple man with no refinement even, no proper manners. He could attain God. He saw a Pandit Ji one day who was... Uh, Pandit Ji had a murti of Shri Krishna and he was worshipping Shri Krishna with some beautiful rituals. He was doing puja and Dhannajat said, you know, I also want to do that. Can I also worship Shri Krishna like this? Pandit Ji didn't want to give him like a proper murti. He says, how is he going to take care of it? He, know, he doesn't know anything. So he got just a stone a round stone, and he gave him that. And he said, you prepare a nice asan, because this is your Shri Krishna. You take this home, this is your Shri Krishna, you take him home, put him on a nice comfortable asan, and every day you offer him food. And afterwards you take the prashad, you do his arti, and go work in your fields. So just take care of him in a very simple way. Dhanajat took his Shri Krishna, went home in his own simple way. Whatever was the best he could do, he prepared an asan for Shri Krishna, sat him on that. And he thought, Panditji said to prepare and offer him some food. I only know how to make, make like simple roti, like a thick paratha type of thing. And that too without filling, just a simple paratha with some ghee and butter. So he says, that's what, that's what I eat, that's what fills my belly, so I can go and work out in the fields, let me make the same for Thakurji. So he made a big thick paratha with some butter on it, and he brought it and put it in front of Thakurji, and he sat down and waited. Thakurji didn't come and eat. Because Thakurji, Hamare Shri Krishna, he has a rule that we have to be 100% surrendered before he will give his darshan. He's with us now. He's gracing us now. But you see, Dhanajat was so innocent, so faithful in his heart, that when Panditji said you offer him the food and you eat the leftovers as prashad, to him that meant Shri Krishna is going to come in his personal form and eat this food. He fully believed that, but his heart wasn't 100% pure yet. He had no learning. He knew no shastras, knew nothing about Gita, knew nothing about how to worship God properly, but he had simple faith in his heart. He sat there. He said, what, you're not coming? Okay. I also won't eat. He let the whole day go past. The next day, he made a new roti for him. He didn't eat that either. Third day, he made another roti. Fourth day, fifth day, now he's getting impatient. Dhanajata, I told you, he's a farmer and he's not very refined of behavior. So after the fifth day, now he's becoming a little upset with Shri Krishna. Panditji said you were going to come and eat my food, I've been without food for six days now. I'm getting so weak. How am I going to go and tend my fields? I've been sitting here waiting for you to eat for almost a week. So he's becoming a little gruff with him. 
on the seventh day, Dhanna Jat had had enough. He said, Bohot ho gaya. I've had it up to here. You come and eat or else. And Shri Krishna appeared and started eating the roti, just like that. Now we know that it took that long for Dhanajat's heart to reach the point of 100% surrender. And as soon as he surrendered, Shri Krishna came to him. But the point is, he didn't, he didn't have learning, he didn't have proper manners. He was not great by any of the ways we normally measure greatness. But he was faithful and he loved Shri Krishna in his own way. There is another famous example of Sant Tukaram. Sant Tukaram was also a very simple man. He was very poor, he had a family, he was married, he had two children. He spent his whole life in the family. He worked various jobs to support his family. He looked after farmers' fields. He did odd jobs here and there. One time when he was... Uh, a farmer wanted to thank him for something he had done for him. He gave him some sugar cane. So on the way home, he had this big bundle of sugar cane. And on the way home, all the kids started coming and saying, Oh, can I have some? Can I have some? So by the time he got home, he only had one piece of sugar cane left. And he told his wife, you know, I had uh, saved the farmer's field from these uh, cows who had come and they were going to eat all the grain. So to thank me, the farmer gave me a big bushel of sugar cane and I was carrying that home, but I ended up giving it all away. They were so poor, his wife got angry. She said, well, why would you give it away? And that last piece of sugar cane, she took that and whacked him on the back with it. And it broke in two. And he said, oh, bohot acha ho gaya. It's so good that you've done this. Now we don't have to worry about how to split it up. It's already broken in two. This is perfect here. <laughs> so Tukaramji spent his whole life living a simple existence like this, literally eking out an existence. And yet he wrote... Such beautiful songs about Shri Krishna that even until today, people sing those songs in temples all around India. Examples like this show us that it is possible to incorporate devotion into even the most difficult family life. Kabir Das is another very well-known saint who was also quite poor. He made a living as a weaver, actually. That was his family's business. And he just wove mats and baskets and clothing. In other words, a common artisan without any education whatsoever. And who doesn't know Kabir Das Dohe? He wrote in very simple Hindi, great truths about God and devotion. And through his life, he also told, taught us and showed us that even a very simple person with a very difficult life, with a whole family to, to take care of, can combine all of that with devotion. And if we think about it logically, it also makes sense that we should be able to do devotion to God. We should be able to attain God through this path of devotion, even while living a family life, even while living in Kaliyug. Because God is gracious. Why would God ever allow such a situation to exist for us where we would not be able to do devotion to him? Whatever situation we're in, God has put us here. Sure, you could say, well, it's because of our past karm. Yes, it's according to our past karm, but God has put us here. As a parent, if your child does something wrong, you give a punishment accordingly, right? 
but you don't give such a punishment that's that completely spoils your child meaning that that makes your child go farther from the path of goodness right you give such a punishment that teaches your child a lesson an appropriate punishment whatever is required you don't go overboard <clears throat> someone may say well some of the sufferings of this world look pretty intense to me it's not possible that god could go overboard whatever happens is according to our karma and certainly there are people in this world who have suffered far more intense things than i have but it's my firm faith that god does not give anything to a soul to undergo that that soul cannot handle that is not in the best interest of that soul even if it's intense suffering it means that's going to bring this soul in a positive direction or that's the best possible thing with the highest chance of bringing that soul in a positive direction so we compared to many of the souls on this earth right now most of us here I think we could call ourselves lucky in terms of our material situation in this world and yet we complain that how can I do devotion to God how can I find God in this life when there are so many with far more difficult situations than us Shri Ram has said purush na punsak nari nar jeev chara char koy sarv bhav bhaj kapat taj mohi param priya soy bhagwan ram goes to the point of saying i even make exceptions sometimes and animals can attain me says purush na punsak nari nar you could be a man you could be a woman you could be neither in between a eunuch you could be any species jeeva chara char koi any living being because there are always exceptions gajendra the elephant attained him kag bhushundi the crow attained him so he's saying anybody can attain me all you have to do is give your heart to me and kapat taji leave the craftiness that you have with me leave that then you'll become extremely dear to me so we have to think that we have this human life god gave us a human life ih che dave di dath sat त्यमस्ति नचे दिहावेदीन महती विनष्टि केनोपनिषद भगवान इज सेइंग यू यू हैव रिसीव्ड दिस ह्यूमन लाइफ एंड इफ यू यूज इट टू अटेन गॉड इन दिस लाइफ गुड दैट्स व्हाट इट्स मेंट फॉर ही इज नॉट डिस्क्रिमिनेटिंग सन्यासीज गृहस्थीज मंक्स householders he's not discriminating he's saying all humans you've received a very precious thing a very golden opportunity but if you don't use it to attain god before you depart this special body that you've received this human body then it's like it's a big disaster for you mah mahati vinashti it's like a destruction <laughs> इह चे दशकोधुम प्राक शरीर से विसरस तत सर्गेशु लोकेशु शरीर कल्पते कठोपनिषद यू थिंक दर्ज सफरिंग इन ह्यूमन लाइफ इट्स लकी यू कैन रिमेंबर द बर्थ्स यू हैड इन अदर लिविंग बींग्स दोज ट्रीज इंसेक्ट्स एनिमल्स हाउ मच सफरिंग दे अंडर गो वन दे कैन फाइन फूड when they're out in the cold without central <coughs> central heating 
or out in the heat without central air conditioning. When they're chased and hunted and injured and there's no doctor for them. We don't remember that suffering that we've undergone when we've lived in those births. And if we don't find God in this human birth, again we'll be going, quite possibly, we would be going and being born in some of those other life forms. For how long? Sargeshu. For quite a few days of Brahma. A long time. Brahma's day is a lot longer than a day for us. It's a few billion of our years. So <clears throat> we have to think about that. We're really good at making excuses or at putting things off. Like, I know I want to attain God. I know that's the only place pure happiness exists. And I want that. But, and then we have a whole list of reasons why we can't do that in this life. And most of them have something to do with the fact that we live in a, in a family life. Or, you know, we're not sannyasis. We're not living, most of, most of us here, you're not living in an ashram. You come and visit when you can. You have so many other responsibilities and you have your job. And we list all of these things as reasons why we can't, we think, Probably because of all this, I can't attain God in this life. But the scriptures are telling us, no, any human can attain God. There's no discrimination. It's just a, it's a matter of knowing how to incorporate this path of bhakti, which is so great, anyone can follow it, no matter how worldly they think they are. Anyone can follow the path of bhakti and attain God, even while living any type of life as a householder, in an ashram, anywhere. It's possible for anyone. So tomorrow I'm going to continue on this topic and we'll talk about the practical side. Then what do we have to do? And it starts with our thinking. With correct knowledge, we can change our thinking. If we correct our understanding, we can shift our perspective and we can have a spiritual perspective on life without changing the world around us and without changing the situation that we live in. We change our perspective, just like you change the focus on your camera and all of a sudden what was blurry becomes very clear. How to follow the path to God while living in the world can become very clear if we just get the correct knowledge. And then there are also a few practical methods, practical things that you can try, that you can incorporate on a daily basis. So we'll talk about all of this as we continue tomorrow. Bolo Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki so now we'll spend a little bit of time doing some Rup Dhyan. So let us do a few minutes of chanting up until uh, the rest of the campers should be joining us in about another 10 minutes. So until then, let's focus, do Rup Dhyan, which means to, to visualize the form of Radha Krishna. Let's do that for about 10 minutes as we do some Kirtan as well. Radhe Govinda, 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 Radhe Govinda. Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda, Radhe 